because I am bringing in my friend and certified arborist, Faith Applequist of Tree Quality, to talk to me about some of the things that are going on in my yard that will likely be going on in your yard at some time as well. We're going to talk about maple trees and a century oak, a crab apple, and some winter damage that has been going on as well. That's all coming up next. So I'm back with Faith and once again I had some questions about a century oak and it turns out there's a whole lot more to it. Now one of the first things that I had said to her was, Faith, this, this thing is crooked. And also there is a knot or a I don't even know what a you seam. call that. A, a seam. seam. Yeah. Where there had been a green tape oh. that had embedded itself in there. Okay. And I couldn't get it out and it just sort of grew that way. Okay. So I was going to ask about that. Yeah. And then Faith had some more things to talk okay. about. So why don't you yeah. go ahead and take over? Okay. And then we'll move down. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. Well, so this is an oak and oak pruning. Uh, has to be done in the dormant season because then we have oak bolts. So we don't want to, you know, break a twig or cut a branch at all. No, right. we want to do this maybe next February okay. or March. Okay. At, you know, yeah. at the latest. Sure. So as far as the way that this tree looks, it does look a little bit, you know, warped down there. Mm -hmm. I mean, a little curved, but I think the tree will accommodate and grow straight. Okay. I think over time it will straighten out. Um, but this seam right here is concerning because this area is not a good branch attachment like we saw in the other tree. Remember we saw the branch bark ridge and the branch collar? Yes. Here we do not have a branch bark ridge here. It's just a seam. Now water can get in there and that can be a point of weakness and then this branch could fall away. So in the in February next year, I would take this branch off okay. of this tree yep. because it's a it's a weakly attached branch. That's sort of, that's what I was really anticipating. Yeah, yeah. But then, yeah. we got down we on got the ground. We got down on the ground. So, and so follow us yeah. down. So down, we're down on the ground here and we, um, we're looking again for the root flare. Like we were looking at the maple earlier, mm -hmm. we couldn't see the the main order roots, the right. structural roots coming out. And so we, this tree was about, you know, we're digging in, it was about up to here. So it's buried a little too deep and sure enough, we found some roots that are circling the stem. Yeah. We cut those, right, see this one right here, circling the stem and this one here. Now those should be, um, you know, oh, yeah. cut at planting time mm -hmm. because the person that planted this tree should have excavated to the first anchoring root and cut these little roots that are at the top. Now, when people plant, and I think I think this is important, when people plant uh, trees mm -hmm. to make sure, uh, plant anything, but trees yeah. in particular because they are expensive and long-lived, mm -hmm. we hope, yeah. that it is extremely important on how they are planted. Um, one of the things that I've always been taught mm -hmm. is that you go to the root flare, yep. so that is above, just slightly above mm -hmm. the ground, you mean or when you plant, yeah. so so this is like three to four inches too deep. Right, yeah. So you're planting there and then yeah. um, prune the roots so that y if you see circling, yes. You yeah, get, get, them, ri that you rid, get of rid of them. And it's easy to do on a little tree when it's mm -hmm. little right. um, to make those changes than it is on a big tree with a big root that's circling. Um, so, yeah, you want to make sure that when you're done planting, you see that first structural root at a visible on the soil surface. So mm -hmm. we should see a root coming through like we see a root yeah. here. This should mm -hmm. be, you know, up here to grade. It should be right. way up here, but it's down below. But now that we've moved it, moved the soil out, that should be okay. So this, so moving the soil out will give it an opportunity yes. to survive better and grow correctly. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's <laughs> I'm good. very glad to yeah. hear that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, good. well, thank you. Yeah. Um, I have probably one other quick little thing that I'm going to talk with Faith about, and that has to do 
with actually some winter damage and a little bit of roofer damage. I just wanted to take a peek at it. That's coming up next. Things that my husband and I disagree on is something that happened to our lilac. Now, uh, we had some roof, roofing done and those shingles are pretty heavy. So when they came down, they did bust a few of the branches. But my thought was, well, I'd really like to just whack it down and let it grow again. Well, Faith may have a little bit something else to say. <laughs> so here you go, Faith. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about pruning this lilac, shall we? Here, um, let me scooch out yeah. here. So um, lilacs, uh, in general, are pruned after they flower and before the 4th of July. Oh, So okay. we have, they, they bloom on old wood, which means that after they are done, like this is already being done, Yeah. now they're going to start setting buds for next year. Oh, okay. And um, when they do that set buds, you can't prune them if you want to have the flowers, you shouldn't prune them um, in the spring, let's say. Okay. They should be pruned sure. in this interval coming up between now and the 4th of July, a okay. couple weeks. Yep. Um, as far as pruning this lilac for, we call it rejuvenation pruning, yeah. um, because this lilac was damaged by the roofers, um, you can see down here that the lilac's putting on some new growth in here, mm -hmm. and we have old growth, old woody growth, these big stems here, and these stems should be cleared out over time because they are not productive like the young stems are and they don't produce flowers and then the tree or the, the shrub has this empty appearance on the interior. Right. So what we really want to do is rejuvenate this and keep the young stems and get rid of the older stems. And how to do that is that is best done again next, next late winter. Okay. So really when you're going to prune the oak in February, come yeah. out here and take the big lilac down to the ground, like oh, four inches, wow. like right here. You could use a chainsaw if you want to, but take, I would take this one and maybe this one and that one out of the branch, of the, of the sure. bush. And then, um, and then you'll find it'll put out new growth like this. Mm -hmm. And then maybe in a couple more years, you take out these next big ones. And then over time you have a large, a nice new plant Okay. that's got good interior growth. So that's interesting because I really did, I thought that I could just level it. Yeah. Because I've seen people do that. Yeah. But that's not the you best way yeah. to get, you I, don't want to, right. Yeah. You don't want to level it um, up here. Mm -hmm. You don't want to cut it right at your waist, let's say, waist height. You want to get down to the ground. You can take the entire plant, every single branch to the ground if you want to okay. in next spring. Okay, or I would wow. say late winter, if uh -huh. you really want to. And it'll pop back. But it'll be small, and we've lost some of this stuff, too. Right. So what I like to do is I like to do it in pieces. Just okay. do it year after year. All right. Okay. Wow. So, <laughs> well, there you have it. And I would like to, once again, thank Faith Applequist of Tree Quality so much for her expertise. And certainly we'll have information about tree quality as well on my website, gardenbite.com. And I also urge you to, if you like the videos, please let me know that. Uh, you can make a comment, you can like it, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel, gardenbite.com. And of course, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and uh, of course, there's Facebook reach out and send me your comments, questions, and suggestions for future bites as well. In the meantime, let's go get dirty.